Okay, let's get a new season underway. Welcome to season number five of this show. <laughs> That's why Give Me a Break is now five years old. And we have a change coming. I'll explain that to you at the end of the show. Yeah, we're five years old. And you know what that means? I'm not, we're not officially old enough to start school. That's what it's gonna be. Fat. So five years of this, we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be giving you more topics. I'm gonna give you guys more topics to, to cover, more school stuff and more COVID related, more COVID related topics, so that you at home, you at home can necessarily understand how to protect yourself and be safe. Because here, give me a break. I'm always out for your safety. So what do you say we get started, shall we? Up front tonight, more COVID. There's more COVID going on as Joe, as President Biden is now mandating that everybody gets vaccinated. And some states are for this, are against this. We'll explain that in just a few minutes. But let's look now at the latest cases of COVID-19. As of yesterday, there are 201 new cases in New Oasis County and a seven-day average is at 2.15. The cases in this state are 3.82 million. We had 24 over 3,000. 60,000 deaths in, in the state. The total deaths here is almost close to 1,100. The tests, as for September 4th, 1.1 million tests have been taken. 163, 163k have been positive, and 14.4% have been positive. As for hospitalization, 94,000 have been hospitalized, people in ICU, 25,610. Vaccinations here in the U.S., Texas, it's at least one dose, 16.9 million, 58.4%, 14.2 have been fully vaccinated. We're like getting close to 20 million. But what about our schools? Well, as you just heard, Flower Bluff ISD is releasing their, decided to release their COVID-19 protocols. So throughout, throughout this season, since this is our fifth season, we're calling it School COVID. What that means is we're going to give you updates throughout every school, the numbers of COVID since it has since it has risen, since school has started. And we're going to start here in Flower Bluff as we always do. So as of, as of last week, you can, you can basically find the, the COVID totals on a spreadsheet. So as of September 1st, the beginning of this month, 10 students have, been, have had COVID, 5 for the 2nd, Three for the seventh, four the third, ten for the tenth, seven ten for the seventh, nine for the eighth, three for the ninth, and for Friday, one student has had COVID. No staff throughout this day. Junior high, the highest is probably from the second. The junior high staff has two members, independent. Intermediate, the district has only one case. So, and right now, as as we start to continue, we are at stage two. And I'm going to explain to you more information right now on this Flabla, the Flabla ISD standard protocol. They're going to go in five stages. I'm going to explain to you those stages right now. Stage one is prevention, no confirmed cases, of staff and students. All the state protocols are in place, monitoring virus trends in community health departments. Stage 2. We're now at stage 2. This is migration. One or more confirmed active cases to COVID-19 one, one facility. All the state protocols are in place. 50 areas is closed for deep cleaning. If that, if, so we have to stay in those two stages. If we go to stage 3, what that means, currently being updated to reflect governor's orders and recently released recommendations from TAA, TEA. Stage four is facility closure. 
And finally, stage five is district closure. What that means is we're going to close the district and move on to remote learning, depending on what the governor said. In the meantime, I've been telling you this every year. Throughout, the, throughout, throughout last season, I've been telling you guys, you've got to make sure to get the vaccine. I know it's the parents' choice to make sure that, that people are... I know it's the parents' choice for their child. But I, what I explained to Lift Driver is, why don't we just recommend it for... recommend mandating the vaccines for people who are under 12. Recommending vaccine, recommending mass mandates for people who are under 12. If you're under 12, you're not required. But if you're But if you're uh, over 12, then you have the choice to get the vaccine. But what did that mean? We start mandating masks. That would probably mean that That would probably mean that what we'd have to do is do that for everyone. That'd be a big time safety issue to be a big time, but the superintendent just said we don't want mask mandates. Parents have a choice for their child, and I agree. And it shouldn't be up to the United States government. It shouldn't be up to President Biden. to say, we need to start mandating vaccines. That goes against the Supreme Court. We should have a choice. Even for us, we Americans have a choice. Just like we've, if we don't have choice, that's why we have choice. We have to make sure that we know what we're doing. And I think I've heard of some ivory hacker that, uh, more states are like on opposed for this, like choosing not to. Everyone's choosing, Biden's choosing to have a law states that everybody should be getting the vaccine. If that happens, then maybe everybody will have a choice of either getting the vaccine or. Just risk going to jail. I'd rather not go to jail. But I already got vaccinated. And I know what's right. But there's still a lot more to come as we continue. Our season. As we continue our fifth season to give me a break. Next, last season I talked to you, before this, before we ended season four, I, I was going to talk to Ivory Hager, but I haven't responded yet, so we'll hear what she has to say when we come back later. But first, when we come back, a message, that same message from the superintendent that I just mentioned, we're going to play for you, and we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm going to play for you guys and see how it's going to affect all the students at Flora Bluff, in my opinion. That's next. We're back with our fifth season premiere of Give Me a Break. Now, before we move on to the, what, this, what Superintendent Velma Lisa Gaza said, we're, we're going to flash it back to... We're going to flash back to six years ago when a school in New York decided, you know what, we have World Language Week. So let's read the Pledge of Allegiance, pick a language, and say the Pledge of Allegiance. So it happened to me in Arabic. It, what happened? I'm going to say explicitly like, Oh my God, what are you doing? How could you speak Arabic in American school? Those were my words. Take a look. Take a look. 
It, what, so what if he had, if they had read it in Chinese? School in New York decided, hey, you know what, we have foreign language. So uh, let's pick a language and let's read the Pledge of Allegiance in that language. It happened to be in Arabic, and what happened? Everybody's heads exploded. Oh, my God, what are you doing? How could you speak Arabic in American school? It's foreign language week. What? So what if he had, if they had read it in Chinese, what would happen? Like, oh my God, you let them read China take over. This is New York. What, what's wrong with you? Oh, the Russians are going to take over if you say it in Russian? No, you're, you're pledging just, allegiance. Like, for example, if they were actually Arabs, and they're not. They're kids who were, who were learning foreign languages. And they said the American Pledge of Allegiance, wouldn't that be a good thing? We yeah, had to go agree. to liberate Iraq, didn't we? Aren't we supposed to be on their side? <laughs> we want to liberate. That means we're on their side. I agree with so this the guy. The school is up in arms. The parents are up in arms. School uh, superintendent Joan Carbone received complaints from military and Jewish families. Knuckleheads! That's what I call them. You went to liberate! It's a good thing! You went to liberate Iraq! You shouldn't be doing this! You shouldn't be doing something like this! Especially for students! What the? What? Hey, knuckleheads! The ones in the military! You went to liberate Iraq! You went to liberate! You went to liberate! You didn't kill them! You went to liberate! Liberate Afghanistan! They speak Arabic in Iraq! In Afghanistan, they have many different languages. In Iraq, there are other languages, but predominantly Arabic. You don't like those people! You didn't want to liberate them, you wanted to kill them! So when you come back, you're, ah, oh, there they speak Arabic. In New York, you ought to be, goddamn, you ought to be embarrassed no matter where you are. And Jewish families, what's wrong with you? We get the point here, but the point is, I mean, if it's foreign language, you get one of us side a pledge and just basically, and just basically, like, say, like, you're not for the, like, like, you're not, like, you're our, like, it's foreign language week. I mean, they're Spanish classes. I mean, said in Spanish and like Mexicans say, "Oh my God, I don't get to speak Spanish." Like uh, Mexicans gonna take over and let's just <laughs> I mean British. I mean, say it stuff in British that uh, I don't know. Oh, now Even though it's a part of our freedom of speech, we have the right to like not stand for the flag and all, but. Let me tell you something. We have the right to not stand for the flag. That's what the First Amendment says. Saying the government does not allow you, doesn't compel you to stand for the flag. So we all have to make sure we know what we're doing. By making sure that, that we get the message out. What that means is we have to make sure we have to make sure that basically for number one, we all have rights. You don't shed your rights at the school gate. You don't take away our rights. And if schools take the right away from parents to say you don't, you should not be wearing masks, you should like mandating masks for all. I mean. Like I said last season, I mean, you don't issue a mask mandate when it's against the Supreme Court. If it's against the Supreme Court saying you shouldn't, you shouldn't be doing this, but if they do decide, I mean, parents have a choice for the child. And I agree with your parents out there. I agree with all parents. Parents have a choice for their child, like what they want best. Parents want what's best for their child. Like, if your child decides not to get the vaccine, okay. That's that's okay. I understand. You don't want to get the vaccine. You're afraid it's too risky and all. But someday when it happens and you come in close contact with someone who does not have COVID, that has COVID, and then basically, you're going to, then basically your child's going to be sent to me. You, 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 you have families that died, and yet 
you still have choice, and I agree with you, everybody has a choice. But this pandemic, this Delta variant is not a laughing matter, and it's not funny. It is very serious. And yet, we have to be safe. Again, we have to be safe. We have to take proper protocols and make sure that we're doing the right thing. You know what that means? We have to make sure that we stay safe and take the proper steps. Social distancing, masks, deep cleaning, foggers. Even the school janitors deep clean every night. And they do a great job deep cleaning. And those desk things, they have to be they have to stay there. I mean, and look, for you kids that want an option wearing a mask, okay, that's your choice to wear a mask. You all have a choice. We we all we all have choices. But sometimes the choices we make in life have consequences the next day. So basically, it's just liber it's just basically three for three. All right. Later, well, then I'm going to tell you about. Well, then I'm going to look. We're going to look back at our very first episode. That's what's going to happen later. But next, but next up on the broadcast, we'll have more game break after this. You may remember the very beginning of this episode we talked about Biden's mask mandate. Well, basically, well, it's just basic. Well, it probably affects all the employees. Like, I'm an employee. I took the vaccine, but for those who did not take the vaccine, there is that new mandate is this. You gotta take the vaccine or face weekly tests. Come on. Don't we all have a choice? We don't need somebody to be standing up here saying. I mean, you can, everybody has a choice, but the point is you don't mandate employees to get masks. I mean, if every employee works, every employee has the right to either take the vaccine or not take the vaccine. That, everybody has a choice. We all make choices in life. But sometimes choices we make have dire consequences, good or bad. And if your son or daughter started to work there, and they, and they had to choose between vaccine or test, then they will still grow up in this world with everybody here trying to mandate Try to mandate a law that says all employees must do this. All employees must do that. Everybody should have a choice. Parents should have a choice. Students should have a choice. Employees should have a choice. Managers should have a choice. We all have a choice for crying out loud. We all have a choice. This is America. We, we're... In the First Amendment, we have the right to freedom of speech. We have the right to choose. This is well, this is the Constitution. And if that law goes into effect, then for those who have not been vaccinated, they can just sit there and go, I'm not going to work. I mean, people have a choice. What I recommend is, if you're going to go to work, make sure you're vaccinated before you apply for work. If you want to sit there and go, I'm not going to go to work because of this new thing or whatever, but because of this issue, like, I understand, I've been there, but we have to do what's best for all of us. And hey, look, I got the vaccine, I got, I got the first vaccine back in July, the second dose back in August. And hey, I'm still doing okay. Look at me, I'm okay. But I still have to wear a mask. So if you're going to go out in public, even if you're vaccinated, you need to make sure that you have a mask by your side at all times. If you're going to a heavy crowded areas, 
You need to social distance yourself. And all schools should be monitoring it. Daily tests, temperature check, all that kind of stuff. Every place should be doing this. And especially, what I recommend is you keep a journal. If your child keeps a journal, write everything down that happened, and if, you're, and if your child has COVID, and they go to the school nurse and ask, okay, wh where have you been? Is, have you come in contact with someone who had COVID-19? I mean, it should be right there in the journal. Right there in the journal. That's basically what has to be. We ought to be safe. I'm trying to protect myself. I mean, just because I'm vaccinated doesn't mean I can just have, doesn't mean I have a choice. I still have to wear my mask no matter what. No matter what the choice is. Everywhere I go, it's recommended, it's recommended that everyone wears masks whether you're vaccinated or not, no matter what you say. We have to be safe. In order to do that, we have to take steps. Those steps meaning to make sure we get the proper vaccination and to make sure that we know what we're doing. We're back after this. You see that picture right there? That's me. Five years ago, I started this show. Look at this hair. <sighs> if I could go back, like... I, I want to go back to that hair. Oh, jeez. I want to go back to this hair. Five years ago today, that's when I started this. But there's going to be a new change from now on. Instead of calling this show, Give Me a Break, we're going to say, I'm going to call it, Cut Me a Break. Now, what's the difference? Well, since we're almost out of time here, I'm going to... Give you definition. Give some more allow and repetitive consequences or action. And now for the beginning, give me a break. Use to express protest or disbelief. So from now on, we're gonna call it cut me a break. It's still it's still the same thing as always, but with a different title. So I hope you'll join me now for so I hope you join me now for cut me a break Wednesday. That's all for this edition work. That's all for this edition our fifth season premiere of Cut Me a Break. I'll see you again for episode two, for season five, episode two of Cut Me a Break Wednesday. Have a good night, everyone. I will see you on Wednesday.